Greetings and God bless you. I'm Reverend Kent Roberson, and I welcome you to Ebenezer Amy for Washington's Bible Study. We're so glad you're joining us today. For those that are joining, wherever you are, please just type in the chat, whether you're from Memphis or Maryland, Washington, D.C., Virginia, Alexandria, from the East Coast to the West Coast, North, South, East, and West. Wherever you are, please just type in the chat where you're joining us from. And if you're joining for the first time, Please uh, go to EbenezerAmy.org forward slash connection dash card. And there we'd love for you to fill out some information so we can stay connected to you moving forward. And we can be in prayer for those of us that are in need of prayer. We can be connected to you in ways that the Ebenezer Church family loves to do. We're glad that you're joining with us today. We want to thank our pastors, the Reverend Dr. Granger Browning and the Reverend Dr. Joanne Browning for this opportunity to come before you on this uh, Bible study uh, night. And so we thank our officers, the staff, multimedia, especially for taking the time to record this and to uh, allow us to bring this to you virtually. Uh, once again, every friend and member that is here with us, let us know where you're joining us from and we'd love to stay connected to you. Right now we'll have a opening selection from our praise team. Stay right here and be blessed. Hallelujah. God, we give you the glory for breakthrough, healing, and miracles. We believe that it's been released in the earth, and God, we receive it this morning. Hallelujah. There's a blessing in the room today. Are you ready? Get ready. It's already been released. Yeah. 
Thank you once again, praise team, for that selection. We're grateful uh, for you lifting up songs of praise and thanksgiving before our God. Uh, let us look to the Lord in a word of prayer. God, we come saying thank you for today. We thank you that you've allowed us to see another day, one that we've never seen before, and one that we shall never see again. We thank you for how you've blessed us thus far. And for those of us that stand in expectation of what you shall do, God, allow us to once again be patient as we wait for the blessing that is on the way. Thank you for this Ebenezer Church family, God, how you've blessed each and every one of us to come together, God, as a body of believers, lifting up praise and thanksgiving unto your name, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless our pastors, the Reverend Dr. Granger Browning, the Reverend Dr. Joanne Browning, that you would build them up, Lord, and keep them, God, on every leaning side, O oh Lord. Protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger, O oh Lord, that they'll continue to bring forth wisdom, knowledge, experience, and understanding to these, your people, God, we pray that you would bless this Bible study moment, that you would allow us to hear, to grow, to know. Touch us, O oh Lord. Touch our minds, our hearts, our ears to receive all that you have for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On this uh, Bible study moment, we ask that you would turn in your Bibles to uh, 1 Peter. It's 1 Peter chapter 5. And we'll be reading verses 6 through 11. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. And it reads, and I'm reading the New Living Translation for us on today. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, God will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for God cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. 
and he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to God forever. Amen. And that's 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. And on this Bible study, I just want to use this sermon topic, It Worked Out. It Worked Out. Uh, in November, uh, when I was before you, uh, during that Bible study moment, the sermon topic was, I hope it works out. And we came from Esther, and we were talking about how Esther really said that she was going to see the king. And in that hoping that it works out, she went, not knowing whether the king would allow her to come into her presence, not knowing whether the Jews, who at that time there was a decree stating that uh, any uh, person who was not a Jew could freely kill a Jew. So she was unsure, just like many of the Jews, unsure of how it would work out when Mordecai, her cousin, told her to go before the king, go fast and pray, unsure of how it would work out. And so in that moment in my life, and like many of us, we are just unsure of how or if things will work out, what will happen, what will take place for us, uh, where we should go, what we should do, whether things will work out, whether we'll graduate, whether we'll get that new job, whether we'll be successful in our current place of employment, uh, whether we'll be able to be a blessing like we thought we would be, whether we'll get married, whether we'll have children. We continue to pray that we hope it works out. But on today, just like I did then, I want you to know that it worked out. Uh, in this point in my life, and for many of you, six months later, as I stated that sermon, I hope it works out, was in November, six months later, uh, from when we did that Bible study to six months later now in May, we see that it worked out. You see, at that point in my life, uh, I was facing an election. Uh, and at that point in time, I was unsuccessful. Yes, I had won re-election to the Democratic Party. Uh, I won re-election to become chair. Uh, yes, those were great opportunities, but it was not what I had wanted. I had lost the election for school board. And in that moment, as I shared, just like Esther, it was a public moment, not something that I could just see as a failure just within myself, but it was something that others could see as well, that during that loss, something that I experienced of others being able to see how I was not as successful as I thought I would be. And for many of us, that might be the case. You might be going through a situation now where it's a public failure, it's a public disappointment, it's a public loss. And it's public because it's not just you dealing with the loss, but others as well had such high hopes for how you would be successful, such high hopes of how they could say that you made it, that you brought it through, that you were victorious. But now... On the other side, you see that you were not as successful as you thought you would be. And like Esther, although things worked out for her, I'm sure she was facing the same thing of, if this fails, everyone will know that I was not successful. But six months later, after being unsure of whether it would work out, uh, I stand to say that it worked out. Uh, because six months later, I was nominated to become the state representative for the state of Maryland, confirmed as of a few days ago by the governor to now become a state representative, something that I'd always wanted to do, uh, but God saw another path there. You see, had I been on the school board, this path probably would not have been there for me. Had I been successful in something else, I might have missed this opportunity that God has placed before us. And so in First Peter, I just want us to grab hold of what is being shared by uh, the author as he writes, uh, sharing in verse 6, So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, at the right time, God will lift you up in honor. And my first thing I want to point out is just to be humble. Humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. Be humble. And that takes a lot of work because for us, uh, especially when you know that you have the right credentials, you know that you have the right knowledge, 
you know you have the right connections, you know you have the income, you know you have uh, the right bank account number, you know the right people, but we must remain humble. Remain humble under the mighty hand of God, knowing why is it under the mighty hand of God or it says the mighty power of God? Because the fact is, no matter how great and powerful you are, God is still more powerful, more capable, has the ability to do what we cannot do even when we think we can do it. And so we must remain humble in the fact that God is working it all out. And not only that, we remain humble because when things don't work out, knowing that no matter how much forethought we put into it, no matter how many connections we've already put in place, no matter how much maneuvering, politicking we've done, the fact is we must remain humble because God can really take it all away as well. But remain humble in the fact that even when you face those losses and those disappointments and those failures, the fact is God is working it out for us all. God is moving, so we must remain humble not to doubt the capable hand of God. Because the fact is, we really can doubt that God knows what God is doing. Sometimes it looks like God is not even present in our situation. But what we don't know is the conversations, the maneuvering that is taking place without us being aware. The fact is that God is reaching out and touching people's hearts in ways that you could never do. Be humble under God's mighty, powerful hand. And I love that phrase of mighty, powerful hand because I think of the children of Israel as they were leaving out of Pharaoh's land. God told Moses that I will bring my people out with a mighty outstretched hand, meaning that hand will bring these individuals out. Not only does he say that, but he says it throughout the Old Testament. I will bring them out with a mighty powerful hand. I will humble them with a mighty powerful hand. The fact is God's hand is so mighty and powerful that what you thought could never be done, God is able to do. Just like God freed the Egyptian slaves, those uh, Hebrews back then, God is able to deliver you out of bondage from your situation. Just as God freed the slaves here in the United States, God is able to do the same for us. Just as God uh, reached out and freed Nelson Mandela under apartheid, God is able to free us from our situations, just as God was able to deliver a lot of us from alcoholism and drug addiction and uh, infidelity, God is able to deliver us all, just as God was able to open doors for us and make ways out of no ways to allow for us to be able to pay our bills, to be able to find a place of employment. God is able to do that for our neighbors and our friends and ourselves. God's mighty, powerful hand is so powerful that we must remain humble in the fact that we are reliant upon this God to deliver us out of every situation. But be humble in the fact that, yes, God is your friend. Yes, God loves you. But the fact is, God is not your genie that does anything and everything that you want God to do. God is not just going to give it to you just because you give your offering. God is not just going to give it to you just because you pray a lot. God is not going to give it to you just because you know the right people. But God gives it to you at the right time and because you remain humble. It's not because you've prayed and fasted that God has a greater connection to you than he does to our neighbor, but it's because God shows his grace and mercy towards us that we must remain humble, that when God does answer our prayers, realizing that God does not have to. God does not uh, cater to whatever our needs and whims are, but God, in his kindness and his grace, Here's your prayers and your requests and your supplication and your humble spirit and answers those prayers and delivers you and lifts you up. I love that. In honor. In a place that all can see that it was God that put you there and not yourself. And there we remain humble in the fact that you did not do it yourself, but God did it. And then in verse 7, as we are dealing with the fact that really there are disappointments, there are setbacks, there are opportunities where we do fail, where God's mighty hand has not moved as quick as we wanted to. It says, give all your worries and cares to God, for God cares about you. And a lot of you know that King James Version, casting all your care upon him, 
for he careth for you. The fact is, when we go through these situations of failures and setbacks and disappointments, when we face these situations that things are not working out the way we want them to, when they should have, how they should have, cast those cares onto God, for God cares. And the fact is, yes, God is mighty and powerful, but God also cares for each and every one of us. And it's not casting the worries and the fears to God, but also the anger at God because God did not answer the prayer how you thought God should. Cast the care of how God did not work things out the way you should have. That some situations did end in death. Cast that on God. Sharing that pain and that frustration. God cares for you and God can handle whatever you throw at God. You're not the first and you won't be the last to go through and you won't be the first or last to tell God how you really feel. But God loves us so much that God wraps God's arms around us and says, I hear you and I know that you're going through right now and I care for you. God cares for us so much that whatever emotion we are facing, God wants to be with us through it. God cares for us. So put all of that upset feeling, that depression that you have, that worry that keeps you up at night, that fear that holds you back from applying, that anger, that sadness, that grief, that mourning, put it all at God's feet. Put it there that, God, you did not move how I thought you should move. Put it at God's feet. God cares for you. And then it goes on to say, stay alert. In verse 8, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And if you're like me, you like those National Geographic, when the Animal Planet used to be about animals, but uh, when they used to show the animals going looking for their prey, uh, if you like that kind of thing where the lion was looking, always searching. And it was always the best scene where you see, finally, the lion was successful. But the lion was successful because the prey was not alert. The lion was able to sneak up from behind because individuals did not pay attention to what was behind did not pay attention to the surroundings. For us, let us be alert to what is around us. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy. Seeking whom he may devour. The devil does not come, as pastor said before, to play with you, just to mess you up where you have a flat tire and you have to change it. But the enemy comes to devour you, not just to make you have a bad day where it rains and, and your clothes are wet, but the enemy is trying to kill you. The enemy is trying to take our children out by us as parents not being alert and praying for our children. The enemy is trying to take our parents out because we're not praying for them. Because we're not aware of the addictions that are being introduced to our children through the phone. Those addictions through vaping that we know that our children are doing in the high schools and middle schools. Of what they're being exposed to on the television screens and through the apps. The enemy is coming to devour us so that you no longer are able to serve and please God. The enemy is trying to kill us through all that we see around us if we are not alert. And I challenge us on tonight to be alert. Be alert when we see individuals alone 
and we don't check on them. We know those individuals are going through depression. We don't check on them. We know that they have suicidal thoughts. Be alert. We know that they've lost a loved one who they love dearly. Be alert. We know that they have an alcohol addiction. Be alert. We know that alcoholism runs in their family. Be alert. We know they have a drug addiction. Be alert. We know that they have a gambling problem. Be alert. And no, it does not just impact them as individuals, but it's the community around them that is impacted. So when the enemy comes in and takes away that father or that mother, it's not just that one individual, but it's the family around them. When they take away that auntie who was the one that individuals could go to and confide in, it impacts the family. When they take away our pillars in the community, it impacts the community. When the enemy is allowed to come in and move through our greedy habits and devour us, and now we lose another individual to the penal system. The enemy is trying to destroy our communities. Not just you as an individual, but all of those that individuals touch. Be alert. And not only be alert, but stand firm. It says, stand firm in verse 9 against him and be strong in your faith. The fact is, it's easy for the enemy to come in when you are not standing on a firm foundation. And how do you do that? Being faithful one to the word of God. And that means, yes, reading the word. Because when the enemy comes in and attacks your children and your family and your friends and your neighbors, you must stand firm on the word of God. That when your individuals in your life are sick, you can stand firm that by God's stripes, you are healed. That when they come in and attack you, you can say, uh, despite what it looks like, you know what? I'm going to trust in God's word. That you can stand on God's word that says, touch not thine anointed and do thy prophets no harm. That's not just for the preacher. That is for you, the anointed. Stand firm on God's word that when it looks like all around you, your soul gives way. On him I stand, my hope and stay. Stand firm on God's word. Stand firm against the enemy, even when it looks like the enemy is winning. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not against individuals, but it's principalities. It's these rulers. It's the enemy in high places. It's these systems in this world that continue to keep us down. That is what we're fighting against. That is the enemy that is set up against us. When our education system fails us, that's what we're fighting against to make an education system that is equitable and that cares for our children. When we look at our health care system and the number of individuals that continue to die within our, in our black and brown communities, that is what we're fighting against. When we look at the number of mothers that die while carrying their children, that is the system and the enemy at work. When we look at the number of miscarriages that continue to happen in our communities, that is what we're fighting against. When we look at the number of individuals in our communities that are faced with cancer rates at a higher number than our other communities, those are the systems that is the enemy at work and what we must stand against to ensure that we are standing firm on God's word and being faithful. When we look at the lack of access to health and food systems, the fact that there are what they call food swamps and overpopulation of greasy food in our communities, but no real palatable food to eat that includes leafy green vegetables, that is what we're fighting against to ensure that we have access to healthy food. Be alert and aware of how the enemy is working. And be aware and be faithful and stand firm. And not only that, but remember, it says in verse 9, that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world 
are going through the same kind of suffering you are. And the enemy wants to come in, as I shared before, not only to get you unawares of what's around you, that he's prowling, but to get you alone. If you pay attention to, as I shared, those National Geographic shows, what happens is that they get the gazelle alone. When the zebras are all together, you know what happens? It's hard for the lion to determine, or the cheetah, to determine where one is, ends, and one begins. The lines among the zebras confuse the animal, so they're unsure of where the one animal is. And I want you to remember, forsake not the gathering of your brothers and sisters. That means coming together and being together. And what I love about Ebenezer, the church is open and we can come together. Yes, you can stream online. But I also want you to remember, yes, you might not even live within this state. But there is a need for brothers and sisters to come together in unity. How good and pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity. Why? Because we strengthen one another. We uplift one another. We encourage one another. But not only that, we ensure that the enemy does not come against one by themselves. But when the enemy comes, they have to come at all of us. So remember that your brothers and sisters all over the world, so no matter where you are, no matter where you're located in the world, you are not alone. No matter what you think you're going through, that you think you're the only one in this world that's dealing with what you're dealing with, I want to remind you that you are not. That there is somebody in this world that is dealing with the issues that you're facing right now. That there have been others that have gone through this same situation before and they have lived through it, and you can too. Know that you are not alone in this process and that God is with you. Do not allow yourself to get separated from this community. But then in verse 10 it says, In God's kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, God will restore, support, and strengthen you, and God will place you on a firm foundation. In verse 10 at the beginning, it says, in God's kindness, God called you to share, share. Share in God's eternal glory. And what that means is God wants you to be with him in that glory. We know how great and mighty and powerful God is, as I stated before. And God wants you to share in that. God is so kind, it says, or grace in God's grace in the King James Version. That God wants you to share in that glory. God wants you to be successful. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to be fruitful. God wants you to have the desires of your heart. God wants to see you succeed. God wants to see your family do well. God wants to see you healed. God wants to see you delivered. God wants to see you set free. God wants that for you. That is the glory that is in Christ Jesus. Not the physical things that we can buy. Yes, that is wonderful, but God wants to see you in such a place that you know that it was God and God alone. And that success, what it is in your eyes, not what others think, but your eyes, is what God wants for you. Not so that you can get the glory, but that you can share in God's glory. And that means, yes, you might get all of those things, the houses, the cars, the business. Everything might be fruitful. Everything might work out. Your children graduated, all of them doctors. Yes, your grandchildren are doing well. They're caring for you. That's wonderful and great. But the fact is, it's not because of what you did, but it's because you can share in God's glory. And the fact is, all of that has taken place because God's mighty hand, as I shared before, was upon you. And God wants that for you. But my last point is that you must be patient. That's wonderful and great.
great and good to have all of that. As I shared before, when I hoped it would work out, I didn't know that I'd be where I am right now. I didn't know what the situation would look like as I was finishing my Master's of Divinity, trying to graduate. I didn't know trying to run an election, what would take place. I didn't know of the daggers and darts that would be thrown my way when people tried to sully my name. God, I thank you that through it all, we had to trust in Jesus and be patient throughout the process. We don't know what it will look like. We don't know what the next is, but I want to remind you to be patient. Yes, it's hard as we've shared before. Yes, it's difficult, but be patient. Because what I love is it says in verse 11, uh, after this, after you have suffered a little while, and a little while is relative, we know, A little while for me was six months. A little while for you could be three years. A little while for someone else could be six years. A little while for someone else could be nine years. A little while for someone else could be 60 years. But after you have suffered a little while, God is faithful that after you have suffered a little while, He will restore. That means you might have lost something. God will support. That means you did not have anyone around you. God will strengthen. That means you were weak. And God will place you on a firm foundation. That means you were sinking. All of those things will be passed away. But God will restore, as I shared before, you've lost. God will support. God will strengthen. God will place you on a firm foundation. There will be moments in our lives where we're weak. There will be moments when we face loss. There will be moments when we are really on no solid foundation, where we did not have a place to live. We were facing unemployment. We were unsure of where our next paycheck was coming from, unsure of what we were going to eat next, unsure. But God is so faithful, have mercy, Jesus, that God will restore you. That means all that you've lost through that time of waiting and being patient, God will give it back to you. The business might have failed, but God, have mercy, will restore you. The marriage might not have worked out, but God will restore you. The children might turn their backs on you, and they might not return your phone calls, but God will restore the relationship. You might have been weak in your body, but God will strengthen you in ways that you might not have ever dreamed possible. You might be a preacher now who's facing a congregation with nobody showing up, but God will strengthen you in those low moments. And God will place you on a firm foundation that what we thought would never be will finally be. That where we thought we'd never be will finally be there. That where we thought we'd never go, God will take us there. That who we thought we'd never meet, God has put us in contact with the right individuals. That the relationship we thought we'd never have is now a relationship that we're thanking God for. So after, after, after you have suffered, there will be suffering. Yes, there will be. There will be pain. There will be hurt. There will be disappointment. There will be fear and failure and depression and heartache. There will be foreclosures and alcoholism and and drug addiction and job loss. There will be divorce and miscarriage and abuse. There will be hurt and pain. There will be failures. There will be suffering. There will be suffering. But after all of this, 
after you've gone through those situations, after you've experienced the loss and the hurt, the grief, the mourning, the fear, after this, God will restore, support, strengthen, and God will place you on a firm foundation. And we end with this, all power, (laughs) all power to God, who alone was able to do all of this, that as we who might be going through right now, as we might be suffering with our brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world, that after all of this, the God of our power, our strength, who is a mighty outstretched hand, will bring us out all power and glory to God forever and ever in verse 11. Amen. We thank you, O God, for your mighty outstretched hand that will deliver us. Thank you for the suffering that you'll bring us through. Thank you, God, for how you've done it for me. You can do it for our friends and our neighbors, God. Thank you, O God, for blessing and keeping us and watching over us. Thank you, O God, for after this, there will be glory. Thank you, O God, for bringing us through, bringing us out, bringing us over. O God, thank you for giving us patience, allowing us to be humble, O Lord. We thank you for allowing us to be alert. May we stay aware of what is around us. God, be with us. Thank you, O God. All power and glory is yours forever. Amen. Now, there might be someone who's with us who does not have that connection with the God that we speak of, who's unaware of how it will work out. On today, I just offer that you go online right now or type in the chat that you desire salvation, which means that you want a relationship with God. You want to know the glory that is through Christ Jesus. Type it in the chat right now, or you can go online. You see on the screens that's scrolling now to go to ebenezeramy.org for salvation. We offer salvation unto you. You might not be a member of Ebenezer, Fort Washington. And so no matter where you are, you can join us virtually if you are not here in Fort Washington to become a member. We offer you membership to this church. We would love to be your brothers and sisters in Christ and our pastors would love to be your pastors. Please click on that so that way we can stay connected. And lastly, you might have been a member of another church. You might have slipped away from coming to church on a regular basis. We offer now to you Uh, to rededicate your life right now. If you feel as though that you need a connection to this God to bring you through, to bring you out, to bring you over, that yes, you have already received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yes, you might even have a church home. But you just need prayer. You need to rededicate your life to get serious about this thing called Christianity, to serving the God that we serve. I ask that you would either type in the chat or go online right now on ebenezeramy.org. And we look forward to connecting with you as soon as you do that with us. Amen. Lastly on tonight, if you have not done so already, we ask that you would give of your tithe or offering. Uh, It is on the screen on how you can give. You can either do it through Givelify, or you can text to give, uh, or you can also go to Ebenezer's website and you could do it through PayPal. The instructions are on the screen right now, and so you can uh, go follow those instructions once they put them up. There it is for you to go. Or you can even drop off your offering here at the church uh, at 7707 Allentown Road, or you can mail it in as well, and you can text to give 833-702-0241. Those are your options. Please, we ask that you would just sow a seed into this ministry so that we can give back to the community that is so richly blessed us. Amen. Let us pray. We'll have our closing word of benediction. And following the benediction will be our closing announcements. Oh God, we thank you once again for our friends and our family and our neighbors that have joined us here online. Oh God, we pray that the Bible study was a blessing, that they would continue, Lord, as you've instructed in your word, that they would remain and be humble, that they would be alert God, and most of all, that they would be patient during this process, that after you've done all that, they would receive the glory that is in Christ Jesus. We thank you, O God, for after this, 
there is glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed. We love you. Considering engagement. Engaged or already planning your wedding? Come out for a Bone of My Bone premarital seminar taught by Pastor Joanne Browning, Thursday, May 25th at 7 p.m. This class is free and open to all engaged and seriously dating couples. Please register to attend by going to our website at ebenezerame.org. Women's season 2023 continues. Don't miss the upcoming activities planned just for you. Sisters, mark your calendars for the Women's Season Outdoor Activity. Saturday, May 20th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the grounds of Ebenezer A&E. We all need to kick back and have some fun. Enjoy activities such as old school games, music, line dancing, yoga, basketball, and other exercise activities, food trucks, and more. Invite a sister friend and let's treat ourselves to an afternoon of some food, fellowship, and good old fun. Saturday, May 20th. Don't miss the retreat briefing and training Tuesday, May 23rd at 7 p.m. Come hear more about the exciting and new things planned for this year and learn more about the customized conference platform. Attend in person here at Ebenezer or stream live on EbenezerAME.org or Ebenezer AME Church's YouTube channel. Sisters, we are less than one month away. Register for the 2023 God is a Wonder Women's Spiritual Retreat and Restoration Conference today. We need this. Our spirits, our hearts, and our minds need this weekend. It will be a powerful, life-changing experience with added workshops this year, including workshops for sisters of all ages, from young adults to senior women, and don't miss Masterclass Bible Study with Reverend Dr. Renita Weens. Two afternoon answer preaching moments and so much more. Attend in person for only $138 or virtually for $108. Go to GodIsAWonder.com to register now. Get prepared and ready because we know that God is a wonder.